YouTube in 2010 was a wild place. It was basically the Wild West. Howdy. Some of the biggest YouTubers at the time were people like Fred, Super Mac 18, Live Lava Live, Official Banff. <laughs> okay, that last guy was pretty handsome. Okay, uh, just to clarify, that was me in 2010. All right, let's not make this weird. That's not some random child. And let's just say the content back then was incredibly different. 2010 was the era of random videos. Now, some of you watching may be wondering, what the flip is a random video? Huh? Uh, I've never heard of her. Um, yeah, yeah, okay, I get it. You're young, you're a Gen Z. Let me break it down. Let's just go ahead and take a look at a few examples, shall we? So in biology, the teacher just hates when people talk. So he says stop yapping all the time. Yapping? Who says stop yapping? Now, that was the one and only Super Mac 18. If I'm being totally honest, back in 2009 when Super Mac 18 was like one of the biggest YouTubers, this kid was basically Justin Bieber before Justin Bieber. I mean, he didn't sing or like have a talent, but he did have the Bieber hair before it was Bieber hair, so. Hi, hello, this is Mitchell Davis, and right now I'm gonna attempt something that's never been done. Are you excited? 1.21 gigawatts! Hold me closer, tiny dancer. Will you be my tiny dancer? Hi! I don't know what I'm doing. <sighs> and that, my friends, was the one and only Mitchell Davis. This man right here pretty much invented vlogging. Like, take it back to 2008, this dude was vlogging before vlogging was a thing. As you can see, random videos are comprised of, get this, randomness. These videos back then were literally just a bunch of this, that, and the other. Literally any random thoughts that would come to mind would end up in the video. It was kind of just a big jumbled up mess of nothingness, as in the videos pretty much did not have a point at all. But at the same time, they were incredible. And I'm not gonna let any Gen Z's tarnish my childhood, all right? These videos were awesome to me. And YouTube back in 2010 used to be the complete opposite of TV. I mean, it was even kind of in the name. YouTube as in you, yourself, and tube like TV. Like you're gonna make a video of yourself and put it on TV, but that TV is the internet? <sighs> YouTube really gave people a place to have their own show. But I mean, it wasn't like some high production value show like on TV, it was something more like this. Yeah, oh, oh I'm, I'm Jerry. Hello, I would be Jerry. You would think by now I would've gotten that right. My lips are chapped. Okay, anyway. Which is way better. Obviously. And back in 2010, YouTube was definitely not considered cool. It was basically a place for the weird kids. Trust me, I would know. Just a little refresher, uh, this was me in 2010, so um, I wasn't exactly cool. In other words, I ate lunch alone at school every day. <laughs> but I've, I've gotten over that trauma. <gasps> I vividly remember back then that no one talked about YouTube or pretty much any other social media. It just wasn't like a huge thing at the time, or at least, you know, for the normies. Ugh, ugh, the normies. Couldn't be me, I'm so weird and random. When I was in school, I was pretty much the only person that would always talk about YouTube and make videos and wear fake mustaches. Mustache. Whatever happened to the fake mustache trend? I mean, come on, does it look like I have a mustache now? When it came to YouTube videos back then, it was pretty much just kids talking to a camera alone in their room having fun, which is definitely a whole lot different than the content on YouTube today. I mean, if you scroll through YouTube these days, you see a whole lot of stuff like this and this and this. It seems like these days YouTube is more like a TV show. Super high production, big budgets, actors, stunt people, professionals involved. So it kind of seems like YouTube has become the exact thing it was trying to avoid in the beginning. Oh man, yeah, I I'm gonna cry. But there is still some hope left. YouTubers like Emma Chamberlain and Ryan Trahan truly embody what YouTube originally was. Although I I'm pretty sure Emma quit YouTube. <laughs> Rest in peace. If you take a look at their videos, a majority of the time, it is just them sitting and talking to a camera. And although Ryan is doing some pretty awesome video ideas, a majority of the time he is filming them on his iPhone. And when you watch them, you literally feel like you're on FaceTime with a friend, instead of clicking on a video and instantly seeing this. What's up guys? Today I'm gonna spend a million dollars to blow up my neighbor's house. Suck it, Karen. But don't get me wrong, I still watch YouTubers like Mr. Beast and Arak because the videos are genuinely entertaining. Like I know Mr. 
Beast is literally the exact thing that I was complaining about, but like he is kind of the exception. He is the one that started this whole thing where like you would have a big budget for videos, everything would be scripted and be a big production. I feel like it's mainly every other YouTuber that's like a copycat of Mr. Beast. Those are the people that get under my skin. He is pretty much the king of YouTube at this point and the videos are incredible. I built a giant death trap, which is just one of many traps we built. And for every trap this contestant survives, he wins $100,000. But if he fails one, he loses everything. I mean, come on, I can't deny that. They may literally be a TV show on YouTube, but it's, I'm entertained. I think the main thing I'm trying to say here is, I just don't wanna see a majority of YouTubers turning it into like a business. Like, oh, I gotta make videos to make more money. Ah, uh, I need a script and a producer and actors. No, okay, canceled. You're so canceled. All you need is a camera, a mini microphone like this one, check it out, and a handsome face like this. I mean, look at me. I'm doing that right now. <gasps> it's probably why my channel's kind of dead, isn't it? <laughs>